Stocks trying to firm up after some weakness. Russell leading the way. Let's talk some more bonds in the economy with James St. Aubin as the chief investment officer at Sierra Mutual Funds. Uh, James, we've got to cuts starting in March, according to the bond market. That is like right around the corner. What has to happen uh, for that to come to fruition? Well, hi, Oliver. Great to be back with you. Thanks for having me. Um, so I think, yeah, the, there definitely needs to be some signs that inflation pressure has officially abated. And I think the Fed has definitely communicated their intent to lower rates, even if uh, uh, growth isn't slowing, right? They want to keep the level of restrictiveness consistent. So as inflation continues to fall, and if that continues to happen, they will feel comfortable easing modestly. And so it, when you think about rate cuts, you have to understand why they're cutting rates. Are they calibrating uh, policy in terms of real rates, or are they responding to a crisis? a potential crisis, a potential slowing in growth, where it wouldn't be just one, two, three, four cuts next year. It could be a lot more. Um, so I think there's a wide range of scenarios right now that could play out. Now, will the Fed cut next year? Yeah, that seems likely, but I don't think anybody would necessarily view uh, one or two cuts just to calibrate uh, real rates in terms of restrictive you know, restrictiveness as a, as a necessarily a boon for uh, any particular asset class. Okay, and this is an important point because uh, there's a difference, right? Cutting out of economic necessity versus recalibrating when inflation's come down. It seems like then there's a sort of implied um, suggestion in there that the Fed may not wait till it's 2% because they say they want to get inflation to 2%. Do you think they would cut with inflation above 2% just to recalibrate on real yields? Yes, I do, because I think they've communicated in the past that they would look at the overall real rate and the real rate changes as inflation drops. And I think what you also have to look at is inflation. Where is it 2% uh, target? What are they looking at? Are they looking at a year over year number, which takes into account what happened six, nine months ago? Or would they be more interested in looking at something, let's say, like a three month moving average or six month moving average, which is very, very close uh, to 2%, at least on the core metrics? So. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to wait for by the time if they waited for the time that where year over year inflation was down to two percent. I think it might be too late at that point. They're I think going to try to be a little bit more proactive here and be uh, again trying to calibrate so they don't slow do do overdo it do too much. What's the most damning economic data right now in your mind that suggests we are cooling at a pace that requires that recalibration? Well, I think I think that just comes into um, really the direction of inflation, not necessarily growth. What I worry about in, from a growth perspective, where they would have to do more than just calibrate, would be something that would be more so catastrophic. And I think the right now you have the best of both worlds sort of mojo going on in the market, where growth is going to slow next year, but not too much. It's going to level out at a pretty even pace, and we won't really have the end of the cycle. Um, and I think that that's probably a risk that the market has right now, viewing that growth as, as staying resilient. And if, the, like I said earlier, if if the market does feel like, uh, or if the Fed does feel like the growth is slowing too fast, and we start to see significant job cuts, that's a whole different scenario. And I think some of the things that I would be particularly focused on right now are things like retail sales, obviously talked a little bit about uh, employment numbers that are coming out in the next uh, uh, this week, uh, jolts as well. Uh, services PMI. Those are some numbers that you're going to have to be uh, pay very close attention to to find out if the the narrative that the market's holding on to right now is going to be validated or invalidated. Mm. And I think what what I really what what really concerns me, and I've said this earlier uh, in the year, is that the, um, the the long and variable lags that often get talked about aren't necessarily very well respected right now. There's sort of this uh, uh, view in the market that the, because the recession hasn't happened, therefore it won't happen. And I there. I feel like that has that may be a, a, a bit of a mistake right now. Um, I think the the variable lags are, are you know in terms of the um, nonlinearity of the lags of monetary policy need to be respected, and the unknowns also need to be respected. So I think uh, again, retail sales look pretty weak in in uh, October, uh, and and we've seen dwindling savings. We've seen uh, increased uh, uh, or, or restarted payments on student loans, those things are going to start to bite. And we just don't know exactly how hard they will bite next year. But I, I do think that maybe growth might be starting to be a little bit overestimated right now. Okay. Uh, so that uh, kind of expectation for more softening. We'll say, according to Black Friday sales, 
people aren't too worried right now about those student loans setting records. Uh, James, to, to come back to your main point, which I think is a really good one and really where we should be focusing our attention as investors is the difference between recalibration of rate policy versus a saving the economy style rate policy that might be something that happens if some of those uh, bearish economic implications come true. How many cuts is recalibration? Because the thing is, we've got now five that are starting to get priced in. That feels to me like that's going beyond recalibration. Is, is that the right math? Like if they just want to kind of normalize based on how inflation has dropped, how many cuts would that be versus the four to five that are getting priced in? Well, I think if you, if you look at inflation, it drops from four to three percent. In order to keep the uh, real rates consistent, you need to cut at least four times, right? So I think that's how, how okay, they're thinking so about it right now. That's all recalibration. Wow. That, that 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 would be recalibration, and I think maybe some modest. Uh, you know, you're, we're not. What I what I would just the point I guess I would stress here is that we're not going to go from being uh, restrictive to accommodative. We're going to be going possibly from restrictive to slightly less restrictive, and and that's not the same as you know. Think about that kind of the, through the mid '90s when the Fed raised rates about 300 basis points and then started calibrating along uh, until uh, the the late '90s. Uh, that that's sort of the experience that everyone's really hoping for right now the so-called soft landing that's sort of elusive for the fed but they did figure out a way to engineer it in the mid 90s uh that that seems to be what's in play right now where they can hopefully get it to the they land the plane exactly on uh target and then they can just uh move up and down uh in calibration uh th that's great but it doesn't happen that often right typically they over tighten they have to they have to go from restrictive to accommodative very in a very short order and I don't think that that's really on the table yet. But if it does become on the table, I think that's that's probably really good for the bond market, but not so great for the stock market and other risk assets like high yield. All right, nice. Like that uh, uh, distinction uh, and uh, the the math there behind the cuts and how to respond to inflation. Appreciate it, uh, James. Good convo. Thanks, Oliver. You got it, James St. Aubin, Sierra Mutual Funds.